Hi guys, I'm James Bruce from MakeUseOf.com and today I'm going to be showing you the process of putting together a computer from scratch. Now, one thing before we begin, if you've never done this before, I don't suggest that you go out and spend $2,000 on new components to put together. Please get an old test machine that you can use the tried and tested method of break it down and build it back up again to practice your skills with a couple of times before you buy anything new. You should be able to find some junk machine down your local trash or recycling center on Craigslist or Freecycle or a charity shop. As it is, I've just upgraded my gaming machine, so I have some very old components lying around that I thought I'd put together into this build. So let's take a look at what you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need a case. This is just an old Lian Lee case that I have. It's a bit broken and tattered, but whatever. And a power supply. Now your power supply is going to need to be sort of matched to the rest of your components. If it doesn't provide sufficient power, your machine won't turn on. As it is, this is relatively old and only provides 380 watts. Now that's fine for what I'll be building today, but if you have a modern graphics card in your machine that needs an extra bit of juice, then you might want to look at at least a 500 watt power supply or if you're going to run two graphics cards in an SLI or Crossfire setup, you'll need something that's at least 750 or 1000 watt. Next up, you're gonna need a motherboard and you should also have a port cover to go with that that will slot into your case. Don't worry if you don't have one, it's not essential, but useful to have. Next, you're gonna need a CPU, some thermal paste and a fan to go on top of that. Then you'll need some memory, of course. I've just got three sticks of 12 gigabytes total here. You'll need a hard disk and an SATA cable, a separate graphics card if you're using one. A lot of motherboards will come with built-in graphics, though for any kind of 3D game, you will need a separate graphics card. Now this is quite an old one, in fact, so it doesn't need any additional power going to it, but a modern graphics card will. Finally, you'll need some motherboard screws and case screws. Those should all have come with your case. So let's get started. To begin, you'll need to install the CPU into the CPU slot on your motherboard. Unclip that and lift up the cover. Now your CPU, only handle it by the sides. It's going to slot into the motherboard in only one way that's possible. You may have some notches cut out of the CPU which will indicate whereabouts on your motherboard it goes in, or you may have an arrow or a dot which points to something around the edge of the CPU slot. Put it in lightly, it, you don't need to push it in, just lay it on top, and that should slot right in. Then simply close down the tray, making sure this bit slots underneath whatever the screw is there and push a little force down and that should lock into place. Now that's going to hold the CPU there. The next step is to place a little thermal paste on top of the CPU. Now I've got some Arctic silver here which is pretty much the best kind of thermal paste you can get. You might have got a sachet of white goop when you purchased your CPU or your fan or the fan itself might have a sort of pinky jelly-like substance on top of it. You can use that. It's not great, but it doesn't really matter unless you're gonna be seriously overclocking your CPU. Now this isn't glue. It doesn't stick them together. It actually just acts as a layer to even out the heat distribution from the CPU to the fan. Now the biggest mistake you're gonna make when applying this is to put too much on. It really doesn't need a huge amount just a small sort of pea-sized amount spread across the whole thing evenly. It's the even cover that you want more than, more than anything. You should never use the entire tube of thermal paste. That's just completely unnecessary. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you don't have a spatula, just use a piece of plastic bag. You can rip off a bit of plastic bag and sort of use your finger to smudge it around. Try to be a little more careful than I am here because I'm in a bit of a hurry. So again, not a huge amount, just a nice even covering. Next up, you're going to attach the fan to the four mounting points situated around the CPU. 
Now this for me is always the most difficult part just because these attachment points are so fiddly. So the way these fans work is that each clip is in two parts. There's a sort of black part and a translucent part. The translucent part will go through the hole first and then the black part will push down and the locking pin will go in place, preventing the whole thing from pulling upwards and that secures it on top of the CPU. However, you have to get those aligned just right. If you want to see how that mechanism is going to work, once it's in the slot, it's going to push up like that and then snap into place, securing it. And to unlock it, just twist it again and pull up. So let's go ahead and fix that onto the motherboard. Lastly, don't forget to plug in the actual CPU fan cable. This should be labeled on your motherboard somewhere. Here, for instance, it says CPU underscore fan. And you'll see there's a little notch cut out which aligns on there. So go ahead and plug that one in. At this point, you can go ahead and put the memory in two. If you only have two slots, use the two which are color coded. Otherwise, if you have three or four, then obviously use them all. Now, again, be careful to only touch them from the sides and ensure that you, before you put them in the clips on your motherboard or fully undone like that, and then slot them in. You may need a little bit of force to push them in and then ensure that the clips at the side lock fully back into place and repeat for all of your chips. Okay, so that's the motherboard dealt with. So let's go ahead and take a look inside of the case. Inside you're going to find a number of cables. These small cables that you find will be switches, speakers, uh, an internal speaker, some LEDs, possibly even a front panel USB or audio connections. Then you're going to have some fans which probably use full size ATX thick power connectors like this. Or if you have a smaller connector, they may connect directly to the motherboard. So let's get those out of the way for the time being. If your power supply isn't already installed, put that in now. There's only four screws that you'll need to that, for that. And it's pretty obvious where they go because one of them is out of alignment. It's not in the corner. So there's only actually one way that your power supply can slot in. So before we install the motherboard in the case, find the rear panel that you had and install that into the back of your case. Now to install the motherboard into the case, you're going to want to align the mounting points on the motherboard with some mounting clips on your case. So before you install the motherboard, you might actually find it easier to connect up the LEDs and power switches, that sort of thing. Now, if you have a good case, it may come with a two part connector that you can actually disconnect and then move the case out of the way and connect those onto your motherboard first. So let's do that together first. If yours doesn't, well, keep your case close by, put the motherboard on top of it and then try and plug them in. But this way is definitely easier. So let's take a look at what we've got. You'll find that they're all colored and white or black. In the case of a color plus white or plus black, the white or black is always negative, the color is always positive. To figure out where these go, you'll find a front panel or a collection of colored colored bits on your motherboard like that. And they should all be labeled in very small text, albeit labeled. We have a speaker first, and you can see it says plus minus speak, and that's referring to the top row. So the red one goes on that side like so. Then we've got 
HDD LED. So look at here, we see plus minus HD. That refers to this one. So the plus one goes on the left. Then we've got a power LED. So this one goes here underneath the speaker. Your motherboard might be different. Obviously, they're all going to have different layouts, but they will all be labeled. And if you can't read the labels that are written on the motherboard itself, check out the manual because they will be in there as well. So we ensure that's on. Then what have we got? We've got a power switch. If I look on here, I can see power plus minus. So we put that there. And finally, reset switch. Again, blue positive. And this time it's reversed. It's negative then positive. So let's put it on like so. And there we have it. If your case also has some front panel USB ports or maybe audio out ports, then you'll find some other places on your motherboard here, for instance, F underscore USB one, F underscore USB two, F audio, they would plug in there. As it is, my case doesn't have that. If you have a USB three one, then you'll find another larger blue port here, and that would plug into there. Don't worry, it'll be pretty obvious if you look at the kind of plugs and sockets that you've got. The one that goes in the USB port is bigger. It's that shape. The one that goes in here are these shapes. In addition, there's probably a notch cut out so it can only go one way. And if not, then there's a pin removed and one of the female parts of the plug you're putting in will be blocked off, in which case those align. It's pretty self-explanatory really. You can't go too far wrong. So for now, that's all we need to plug in. That's all I've got for my case, this single connector here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this into the case. Get the cables out of the way first. Line this up with the mounting points and the back cover that we've inserted. Like that. To secure that to the case, you're probably going to have some small screws with a rubber washer or similar. Now exactly where these mounting points go, will vary by the size of motherboard that you've bought. This is quite fiddly and quite tedious. Next, I'm gonna plug together the front panel switches that we did earlier. You can see again where those align with the cutout bit and the notch here. Then I'm gonna plug in the power for the motherboard. The big fat bit of the cable should be obvious. It goes there. Again, there's a clip and a protruding piece of plastic where it connects. Try not to put any pressure on the motherboard. If you can't get it in properly, put your fingers underneath and then push down. You should also have a separate CPU connector. Might be separated into two cables like this. So it should be fairly obvious where these go. Look around the CPU, you'll find an eight pin slot for it to go in there. Just so that's gonna provide the extra power the CPU needs. Anything else you've got will then either be used for the fan or the hard disk, or if you have a modern graphics card, again, you're going to have some other six or eight pin connectors, or both, in fact, that will go onto that. But my graphics card doesn't do that. So for now, I'm just gonna install a hard disk. This is a 3.5 inch old hard disk that I have a spinning hard disk. Nowadays, you're probably going to use a two and a half inch SSD drive rather than this, which will be smaller. And if you need to mount that into a case which is designed to accommodate three and a half inch, you'll have to buy a separate mounting bracket. Now, when you put these in, they should ideally be screwed on both sides. So you'll need to take the other side of your case off. But for brevity today, I'm just gonna screw it into one side. One thing to be careful of is if you have a full size graphics card that you don't do what I've just done and put it into that slot because it's quite likely a full graphics card is going to hit the back of that or at the very least cause problems with the cable in which case move the hard disk to a different slot so once your hard disk is in you can go ahead and power it you'll likely want one of these SATA connectors which is a sort of flat plug and again you'll see it has a a little notch cut out of the side 
there's only one place that this will line up with on your hard disk. At this point, I would plug the fans in as well. So we've got one here. So that's for the front fan. And then this one as well. For the rear fan. And just tuck those cables out. It's usually a good idea to cable tie to a part of the system where they're not gonna be in the way. It keeps everything neat and tidy. At this point, I'm also gonna plug in a data cable for the hard disk. So when you're looking for the right ports to plug this in, it's likely you're going to have maybe at least two, probably four or five or six sockets where it can go. And these will likely be in the corner of the motherboard. Now, if you do have multiple slots, always use zero for your first drive. And again, there's only one way in which that can go on. So that should be easy enough to figure out and push into place. Finally, I've got a separate, albeit old graphics card that I'm gonna put in. Now this is always gonna go in the slot closest to your CPU if you only have one. The other one is for running two graphics cards, but it's a little bit slower. So place this in the one closest to your CPU. And if you haven't already removed the blanking plates, you can see this is an old machine, so it's already had all of the rear banking plates removed. Those are the bits that look like this. So push that in. Line up the pins on the side line up the pins down there. And then as you push it in for a graphics card in one of these big slots, you should hit, hear it click into place as the lever at the back locks in. To remove it, obviously, you're gonna push down on that and then it'll free it to remove it. Once it's pushed in, be sure to connect it up to the case with a couple of case screws. And we're done. So before you close up the motherboard and test it out, do one last double check of things. Is the motherboard connector, the big power connector plugged into the motherboard? Does the CPU have power? Check the hard disk. Does it have power and a data cable leading to the right place on the motherboard? Is the memory all secure and in place? Are the fans on the case all attached? Are the front panel connectors attached? And finally, if your graphics card needs additional power, which would be here, are they plugged in? And that's pretty much it. You can now close it up, plug in a monitor, and turn everything on to do a power on self-test, or P-O-S-T. All right, so the moment of truth. If nothing happens, your power supply might not actually be on. Make sure you switch that on and then hit the power switch. If everything goes well, you might hear a single beep and then it'll probably ask you to insert a startup disk. If everything doesn't go well, you may hear any number of a series of beeps and these indicate a critical error of some kind in which case you'll need to refer either online or to the manual that came with your motherboard for exactly what they mean. It might be something as simple as you've not quite inserted a memory stick correctly. Hopefully it's something easily corrected. So one thing that I like to do once I've built a new machine is to go straight away into the BIOS and just keep an eye on the CPU temperatures for a while. That would indicate if you're overheating, perhaps you installed the fan incorrectly, perhaps you forgot to plug it in, in which case you'd see those, those temperatures rising fairly quickly. So hopefully I've managed to teach you something today about the process of building your own computer, but really the best way to go about it is to get a junk machine and have a go yourself. That's how I learned as a child, I would take apart machines and put them back together again. Once you've got a few builds under your belt and you're confident, you can go ahead and buy new components and then put together a powerful gaming rig or whatever suits your purposes. If you've enjoyed this video, please show your appreciation by hitting like and possibly even consider subscribing so you can be notified of our twice weekly giveaways and technology tutorials from all of us at makeuseof.com.